Today I'm going to show you how and demonstrate the difference between series connections, series parallel, and parallel connections on solar panels. We're going to use these larger solar panels to demonstrate basically all the connections and then we'll use these smaller solar panels and we'll go hook them all up in a real world scenario test and there's really no difference between those over there or these when we're connecting everything from those large ones. The principles apply to all of them so we'll get started. So first we need to find the specs of each panel and this is going to be on the back with a sticker and it'll say VOC on it for voltage for open circuit. This will show us our volts but we're going to just round it and keep everything simple at 40 volts and 10 amps. Okay, to do a series connection, this is super simple. Grab any two of these wires. Grab one of these, and then just grab the other one that's gonna correspond with it. This one being a female plug or the negative, you're just gonna grab the positive. You're gonna plug it in together. That is now a series connection on these two panels. We have now doubled our voltage, but our amperage will stay the same. So now we'll just finish connecting them in series. positive and negative together. And now you've basically built a small solar string or solar array and all four of these are in series increasing the voltage. So if each one of these panels is 40 volts, then our total voltage at the end, if we were to connect this negative and that positive down there would be 4, 8, 120, 160 volts roughly, give or take the conditions. Okay, so now we're gonna do a series parallel connection and there's different types of branch connectors. You can use these types. There's also these other ones that will show up on the screen right here, but this is just one way to do it. So remember from earlier, we did a series connection. Now we're gonna parallel this one and also this one, that way they're together. So with this one here, each one has a positive still and a negative, so one positive, one negative on these two panels, and one positive and one negative on those two panels. So now we'll combine them together with this series and this series, and we will parallel them. So now we'll get these branch connectors and we're gonna hook up our negatives. You'll take one negative on this side, plug it in, and then we have the number two negative over here. Stretch out and get that. Now, those two are in parallel, we have one negative now. And the same thing with the positives. The positive will go together here. And this positive will go together here. And now we have one out of each. One negative out, one positive out. And now this gives us a series parallel connection. Okay, again, with the branch connectors, now we'll do a parallel connection, and this is going to double our amperage, but leave the voltage the same, and then we'll go out and do a little real-world kind of testing and scenario, just to kind of give you an idea on what happens when these panels are shaded and more. Okay, so now we'll take our branch connector, and we'll hook up our negatives first. So one negative on one side, and the other negative on the other side, and now you have one negative. Same thing with the positives. Positive here, and positive here. And now you have one positive, one negative, and now you've paralleled these two panels together to increase amperage. So now let's go out and test them and see what the difference is, and we'll use some smaller panels just to kind of give you guys an idea. Okay, you always wanna know what the specs are of the panels you're hooking up, and each one of these is 20 volts each, roughly, and about five amps. And now the conditions for today is kinda of mostly sunny skies with some jet streams or vapor trails kind of in the way, but that's okay, that's not important. What we need to know is our voltage. So right now the volts are at 80 volts because these are all connected in series, which adds our volts all together coming out of this pin right here. So we need to know what we're going to be plugged into like this power station or this other power station over here. This one can only hold 60 volts before you do damage to it. So that's why you want to know the voltage coming out of your solar panels because this one will hold 150 volts. And also when you have charge controllers, it's the same thing when you plug all these together. So now we'll go ahead and get started and plug this in and then I'll show you the front of it. So now you can see this is going to come up and now we're getting about 315 watts out of all four of these solar panels. 
And so now we'll start our testing. So what we're gonna do is basically shade just a little portion of this solar panel right here, and all four of these are connected in series, right? So remember our, our watts were about 315 watts. Let's go back over here and look. So now you can see we've lost over half of our output just from that little block. And if I put it on there even more, it would basically make this string at almost zero output. So now we're going to actually put these two in series. We'll put those two in series and then we'll do a series parallel connection and show you the difference. Okay, so I got these connected now and these two right here are together in series. Those two are together in series and then paralleled together like earlier using those branch connectors. Now I haven't touched that wood block and look at the difference. Our output is higher because the other panels that are in series on the other side are not really affected at all by that little bit of shading. And this is one of the most popular setups as a series parallel. We'll move that out of the way so we can get a baseline now. So we'll come back over here and check. Now we're back up to about 315 watts. And a series parallel connection is still one of the most popular ways to do off grid. But when you're doing a grid tie system, we don't even do that anymore. We're now using micro inverters, which this helps the output stay real consistent. Even though these ones are shaded, their output is minimal, but the other ones are not affected at all. And they're still putting out 100% all the way across. So it's totally a different setup now when you're doing grid tie. And what we're talking about is mainly off grid stuff only. But we'll get back to the testing on this. So I'm going to put this block here on this one solar panel and we'll get back to our series parallel connection. So now we'll go over here and take a look. We were at 315 watts, give or take. And so right now, those two panels are 100% output. These two panels right here are basically dead and I'll show you what I mean. So I'm going to put this block right here. And so now this one's covered and so is that other one. So those two are basically zero output still 160 watts coming out from the two panels over there so they're putting out about 80 watts each so now we'll go ahead and do another demonstration and i'll show you what i mean here we'll take off one of these blocks real quick move this out of the way and now see 160 watts still nothing has changed again series parallel so those two panels are not affected so i'm going to come over here now so what's going to happen if I put this block here? You have any idea? So will we have output because these two in the center are open? Or will we have no output because these two are in series and so are those two? And look, zero output. So because a series parallel connection, it takes out the ones that it's connected to. So since those two are connected together, basically it cancels each other out and it's at zero. Same thing with this one. Those two are connected together and it's at zero. And I'll show you the difference here in a minute. So let's pull this off real quick. And now what happens? Those two are going to start putting out power, right? So if we look over here, now we're back up to about 160 watts. Again, series parallel. Okay, so now I've hooked all four of these panels up in parallel. And what does that do? That increases our amperage. So 5, 10, 15, 20 amps, right? So these are good for short run type off-grid sheds and buildings, and you can still do it in other applications, but you typically don't get as much output. It's a little bit lower, but again, right now we do have this little kind of vapor trail in front of us, so that's gonna change it a little. But look, about 240 watts, give or take. So now we'll put this block down, and if this was its series connection, it would basically be no output. And so now look, we were at about 230, now we're at about 195 as far as wattage out. Let's do it again because that vapor trail is kind of moving. So take a look. Okay, 260 watts now. So we'll come back over here. Let's put this back down. And so one panel has now been affected and we've lost about 50 watts. Now if this was series parallel, we would have been down to half. So let's grab this one and put this here. So now what do you think our output's gonna be give or take? We have two panels that are blocked, so those two are dead, but remember in series parallel, this was a zero output configuration, but now in a parallel configuration, we still have two open panels giving us full power, about 75 watts each, give or take. But what if we move this one over here, kind of get this up and over, okay, so now that this is here, set that back in place, so does this change anything in a parallel configuration? It's not going to do anything because each panel is able to operate independently on its own. So again, 
we are still getting two panels that are roughly putting out 100% output if they were actually aligned, we didn't have any clouds in the way and, and, and more. But now let's see what happens when we cover up another panel. So now you should be kind of catching on what's going on here. So now we have one, two, three panels and only one open one, right? So in any other configuration, this would be dead, but in a parallel configuration, it operates independently. So we're still getting, look at that, about 80 watts. That's because the uh, you know, sky's kind of cleared up a little bit, so we're getting more output, but this panel is not really affected when it's in parallel. But if we cover this up, well, we've lost about 20 watts there, put my arm on it a little bit more, and probably lost a little more but actually not doing too bad. These Harper Freight panels actually do perform pretty well. I'm still impressed by them, but, and they come with legs, so that's cool. But another cool thing about being in parallel is that here, we'll put this here. Now you guys will see that all four of these are now completely covered up. So obviously our output is gonna be what? Zero. So you come down here, there it is, zero. But another cool thing about a parallel configuration is that these have their pros and their cons, you know, because they're great for shade and everything, but their output typically you don't get as much. But so 270 watts out and our voltage is only at 20 volts, as you see here, now I can actually hook this up to other types of power stations and more because this one right here is a rating at like, I think it's 12 volts to 60 volts. So now I can plug it into this one and charge other types of power stations or use other types of solar controllers and more without going over and frying things because they can handle over amperage basically, but they don't like being over voltage. That'll actually fry the controller inside and boom, away it goes. So now you can see that we're up to about uh, 250 watts using this type of configuration. So it does allow for more options when you're plugging things in, but it also has its own set of complications because with all four of those panels, that's 20 amps right there. Add two more, you're at 30 amps. And that's the problem with parallel is that you need a much thicker wire. Instead of 12 gauge, maybe 10, you might have to go to eight or six gauge wire depending on how far your run is and how many panels you plan on hooking up. So that's why a series parallel configuration is still one of the most popular for an off-grid setup. But this kind of gives you an idea and it gives you options if you happen to be hooking up something smaller. So I hope you liked the video. Check out this other one right here.